Hi everyone, thanks again for joining us at Practice Perfect today. This is a tutorial on basic documentation and electronic medical records. We're looking at the scheduler right now for this particular uh, data set. We're looking at the client here for Heather, a test client. We're just going to practice on some basic documentation functions. You do not need to do your documentation from the scheduler. The only reason I choose to show you the scheduler is this, in theory, would be a list of all the patients that you're seeing that day, meaning this is a list of all the patients you want to make sure you would have documentation on. So the first thing we're going to start with are the daily SOAP notes. We also refer to those as progress notes, daily progress notes. From the scheduler, or even outside of the scheduler, on your function bar, you'll see two blue file folders. The blue file folder on its own will bring you to a list of any previous SOAP notes or daily progress notes that have already been written for this particular patient. So this would be all of the progress notes. The blue file folder with the green plus sign is going to bring you directly into today's SOAP note or progress note or start you a new note for today if you haven't already done so. So we're going to hit the blue file folder with the green plus sign. Now I've already come in here and entered some notes, but typically when you come into a patient, your note would be completely blank. You have your four basic sections, subjective, objective, assessment, and plan, and those can be changed under your settings tab, under customize progress notes and documentation. Should you not want to use those four different headers, you can certainly come in here and customize that. You have a few different options for inputting text into these sections. The first thing you can do is come along and type. The second thing you can do is start using quick phrasing. And quick phrasing is where you type out a sentence or a phrase on any patient you want, highlight that phrase, go over to the right hand side of your screen and click the green plus sign, give it some kind of a description, put it into some kind of a category or make up your own category and then say OK. What that does is it turns it into a quick phrase here that follows you around to all of your different documentation. So for an example, in my subjective section, I've created a phrase under here called no change and when I click on that, it types out the sentence that I turned into a quick phrase. I've created categories that match my notes but you can literally do whatever you need to do in this section. Another cool feature in here is connecting your phrase with an actual charge. So this phrase that I've just used right now, Therex of 30 minutes, I want to have the system assume that that is equivalent to a charge for my patient. So when I initially set up this code, I told the system that whenever I use a phrase called Therex of 30 minutes, that is equivalent to my fee code of a 97110 two units. So what that will do now is the system will assume that's the treatment that I want to charge for the patient today. You can connect all of your phrases that way or just choose some and then others. You're always going to have to verify it before you sign your note anyways. This is just a quicker way for the system to assume that's what you want to enter and then you just have to of course verify it. So as you go down your note, you're going to be free typing information. You're also going to be using quick phrasing hopefully to complete your notes. We also give you a copy and paste feature. So any previous notes that you've written on this particular patient, you can copy each of the individual sections. So if I wanted to copy the objective section from 20 days ago, I would find my note from 20 days ago and it would copy that same information for me. I can use quick phrasing, I can use free typing, lots of options. You have your formatting options here just like you would in Microsoft Word. And now we're going to talk about goals. The goals, just like our blue file folders, work the same way. So these little bullseye target symbols here. The bullseye target symbol on its own will show you a list of all of the activity for goals, meaning any goals you've ever added, modified, or changed for your patients. So it keeps a history of any time you've added those for your patients. The target symbol with the green plus sign will bring you to today's goals or the current goals for this patient. To add a new goal is a green plus sign. Choose from your drop down list and modify your description. Add any fields in here that you want to add, your term, when the goal began, when it ended. The system is keeping track of, I just, of me modifying this particular goal to this patient right now. The previous goals popped up because those were entered from a previous date. 
say OK to save those goals. The goals themselves come from the bank, which is listed under housekeeping, clinical, and then the goals section. So anything you enter into here, that's what will be available in the drop-down list to add a goal to your patient's file. Those goals transfer from one day to the next, so you don't need to keep repeating the goals every day. Just verify that the goal hasn't changed. The next thing we're going to do is go to the body chart. So the body chart allows you to indicate the pain areas or the injury areas for these particular patients. I just click my mouse to get indicator number one. I answer my questions appropriately here. I can even free type whatever I want. I can go back to indicator number two, answer the questions for that, indicator number three, and so on and so forth. You just keep on going, and when you're all done, you hit the save button to save that information. Now, if I were to look at a preview, so I'm going to go to the printer icon and look at a preview of my note. I'm going to tell the note that I also want it to include the goals and the body chart. Just an FYI, the body chart is rather large, so it's going to take up uh, about half a page on your documentation. This is what a particular, um, sorry, a daily soap note looks like. We have our subjective objective assessment and plan section. Our goals have come over automatically for us. And then we have our body chart information on our notes as well. So just remember that's an option that we can turn on or off when we're printing our goals. You need to verify before you sign your note that the services you performed or treatment that you performed with the patient is correct. So to do that, we're going to hit the hand symbol up on our function bar. And you'll notice that two units of Therex has already populated for me because of my quick phrase. If that was incorrect, I could simply modify the entry. If I also had an additional treatment code that wasn't showing in this screen, I would go back into my list of codes, choose the code I wish to charge for the patient with the number of units. So you're always having to come to this screen anyways to verify the treatment that you performed with the patient. Your next job is to confirm the diagnostic codes. If the diagnostic codes show up here correctly, just simply put a tick mark next to the ones you're treating the patient for. If you need to add a new diagnostic code for this particular patient's file, click on the new incident diagnostic tab, green plus sign, and choose your diagnostic code. The system will find the description or choose the description and the system will find the matching code. Remember that when you go back to this screen, you will want to tick the box to indicate that you did see the patient for this particular injury area. When you're all done, say OK. The last thing you need to do on your SOAP note is sign. So the status of your note is always in the incomplete status until you want to put your signature on it. So when you're ready, you will change this to completed and signed. You will verify that you are in fact the therapist that is authorized to sign this note. And when you do that, the note becomes locked. You can no longer edit the note. If you need to make a change, green plus sign will create an official annotation or an addendum to this existing note, so an official change to this existing note. When I go back to the scheduler now, my patient has two new symbols that we want to see every day on every patient. We want to see the blue file folder. That'll indicate that we have a signed and completed soap note for this patient. And we also want to see the hand symbol, which indicates that we have entered the charges for this patient's file. So the blue file folders are the daily soap notes. All other documentation are these two pieces of white paper called activities by document. So every patient has an activities by document section. You have four different options in here. The first of which is to scan directly into the patient's file. So by clicking on the scan button, if you have a scanner connected to your computer, you can launch the scanner directly from there, and whatever you have in the scanner will save as a JPEG to this patient's file. Option number two is to use the new documentation drop-down list, and for those of you who have not uploaded your own forms, you will only see the top six options. The top five options are our templates.
So they come with the system. They work the same way in terms of a soap note where your quick phrasing has followed you around. So you can quickly fill out your information by using your quick notes or of course free typing. Uh, they work the same way in terms of signing your note and printing your note. The only difference is when you print or preview one of our eval forms or one of our templates, we will only show the information that was completed. So we would never show any blank sections that you left on the documentation or the templates. We will only show the information that you've completed. You'll notice that the goals are something that transfer back and forth between evals and SOAP notes as well. Anything you preview in our system, don't forget, you can always save it as a PDF and email it. You don't necessarily have to print it. The third option would be to go to the scan documents, and technically this is really just attaching an electronic document. So when you click on scan document, you can choose how you want to file this document. The yellow file folder is going to take you onto your computer where you will find the document that you want to attach to this patient. And you say, okay, document is now attached to this patient's file. The next option would be to upload your own form. And there's two other videos that you may want to watch that describe how to build a form itself in Microsoft Word and then how to upload or import that form into Practice Perfect. You may want to contact our support department to get the links to those videos. These forms are forms that we have created in Microsoft Word and we've imported them into the system. So they're interactive with the system. If I click on them and tell the system to generate the form, it should open the form in whatever I wrote it in. So in this case I wrote it in Microsoft Word. My form has opened up for me and it's filling out certain things like the patient's name, birth date, because that's how I've set up the form. Whenever you leave your documentation, you always want to hit the re-import to save those changes back to the, doc to the patient's file. So there you have it, everyone. That's the basic documentation training. If you have any questions, please contact our support department. And thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you soon.